Hey y'all, today I'm going to be talking about five plants that I will not be planting again, at least anytime soon. Forever is probably too long because who knows where I'll end up in the future. Um, but five plants that I have planted in my current location and had a number of issues with and therefore removed from my garden and will not be planting them again in this particular garden. So I want to go through those with you guys. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you drop me a comment below. Tell me what plant drives you insane and you will never plant it again. Does it get infested with pests? Um, does it spread like wildflower? Does it have a terrible scent? Like why you don't like it and why the rest of us should be avoiding it. <laughs> and if you have a controversial plant that you dislike but everybody seems to love, like for me, I don't like hostas. Never planted them, don't have any desire to plant them. However, so many people love them and I just don't get it. So, <laughs> but go ahead and drop me down, drop a comment down below and let me know which plants you do not enjoy having in your garden or which plants you have pulled up and will never plant in your garden again. Come here. Okay, I did want to introduce you guys to my other dog. This is Rookie. Now, Buffy is with me all the time. She likes to literally be touching me at all moments. Rookie is a little bit more all over the place and he is, he is a love bug as well, but, um, he likes a little bit more freedom and he runs around the house. He does not like to be outside at all. He wears a diaper because he he's real a pretty dog, but he's he's not the smartest puppy. And so puppy dog. So when we're not there, he tends to make his mark. And so he has to wear a diaper in the house. Um, and then outside, he doesn't like to go outside to go potty. So it's a good thing he's so cute. And it's a good thing he ended up with a family like ours that we would never give him away because we love him so much, even though he's difficult. And there he goes. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the first plant that I will not be planting in my garden again. And that first plant is African daisies. So I planted some African daisies last year um, from seed. I grew them from seed. I found them to be really straggly looking. I found them to have very unattractive foliage. I found their colors to be very jarring compared to what I have in my landscape. Um, it's too bright and bold of an orange, almost, flores almost fluorescent feeling, um, which was just too much. Um, I also did not like the growth habit of the plant. It tended to trail out and then grow up with the flowers. It just was not an attractive plant. And so that is number one reason I will not be growing African daisies in my landscape again because it was not an attractive plant. Okay, the second plant that I will not be growing in my garden again is rock rose. Now, rock rose is a gorgeous plant. It's absolutely beautiful and it is drought tolerant and it just keeps on going and going and going. It's absolutely beautiful plant. However, it reseeds itself like crazy. It sends runners, it re drops, um, it drops seeds that'll reseed themselves all over the place. So once you put in rock rose, you're gonna have rock rose everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And so while I love the look of it, and I loved how drought intolerant it is as well, what I did not like is having to dig up the little mini seedlings all over the garden. I don't have a large garden. I don't have an area that I can just let the rock rose take over. And so it just did not work out for me in my garden and I will not be planting it in this space again. The third plant that I will not be planting in my garden again is mint. And I know y'all are like, well, duh, Amanda, nobody plants mint in the ground. I did. I tried it. <laughs> but now I can say from experience, if you plant mint in your garden, it sends out runners all under the soil in all different directions and gives you mint everywhere. It took a lot of time to dig up all the mint. Um, thankfully, I've not had any issues with it reoccurring, but that's because I spent hours 
pulling at the plant and following each little runner and pulling up the runner all the way through. Um, it was a very delicate and tedious process uh, because you don't want the runner to break. The runner breaks and some of it stays under, it's gonna reroot and turn into a new plant. And so I will never plant mint again in the ground in my garden. Now, I do plan on planting mint in a pot on my patio um, in the heat. And so it loves full sun and such. Although it's pretty much gonna thrive anywhere. Anywhere you put it, it's probably gonna do pretty good. But I will not be planting it again in my actual um, garden soil. I will be planting in a pot. It does make for a spectacular cut flower and it even blooms and has beautiful blooms which are really fun for arrangements as well. The fourth plant that I will not be planting in my garden and again is, and this might be controversial, Shasta daisies. Y'all just can't get behind them. <laughs> I, I, I guess I thought that I would have these beautiful blooms for cutting and they're not great for cutting. I find them to be short and stubby. I found that the Shasta daisies I planted do not give me rounds of bloom. They're just one wrap you know one um bloom cycle and then they're done and maybe might give me some wimpy ones um towards later in the fall um i don't really like their growth habit of like so low to the ground like a ground cover and then the blooms come up i don't like the look of that and i don't necessarily need this shasta daisy this white shasta daisy because i grow oxide daisies which are tall long stems um, and are fabulous for cut flowers and so i grow those instead to replace the shasta daisy that you know beautiful white daisy with the yellow center so shasta daisies it's not necessarily that there's anything wrong with them they're just not for me i don't enjoy the look of them in my garden I don't enjoy them as a cut flower. I don't enjoy them as kind of a ground cover thing that they do. Um, I just don't get any joy from that particular plant. Therefore, I will not be planting it in my garden again. Okay, and the fifth flower that I will not be planting in my garden again, and this is kind of weird that I'm saying this, but I will not be planting pentas in my garden again. And you guys might be going, well, why, Amanda, why wouldn't you plant pentas? They're an absolutely wonderful annual. They do great in the heat. Um, they are prolific, they're beautiful. There's so many wonderful things about them. But the reason I won't be planting those again is because every time I plant them in my particular garden, they get stripped by some insect. I don't know what the insect is, I haven't been able to discover, but literally the insect strips the blooms and all the leaves and so I just literally have green stems left. Every time I had a beautiful um, containers filled with a mix of vinta, uh, vincas, pentas, and um, I think I had petunias in there. I had a wide variety of things in there. And those insects will go in and just strip the pentas, just do that. I had them in two other locations in my garden, including my um, wall garden, which I absolutely love. And the insects just go in and just strip it down to just the stem, all leaves gone, all blooms gone. And so while I absolutely love the look of pentas, love them, the fact that they get stripped within a couple of weeks by the insect, it's just not worth it to me. So they are a bloom that I will not be planting in my garden again because I am unwilling to treat them for whatever this insect is. I try to not treat things in my garden very often at all. I like the idea of like, that there's some things that are gonna get eaten and some things that aren't. And I like the idea of beneficial insects and things like that. And while, you know, I like the idea that I fed whatever insect that was, I got such a small amount of time with the plant that it's not worth it for me to plant it again. So I will not be planting pentas in my garden again. Now, as a little bit of bonus content, I wanna talk about a few plants that I've had struggles with, but I'm willing to try them again. And I will say if I fail a couple more times with these, then they're gonna be added to this list. The first one being Veronica. I paid for Proven Winners Veronica. I think it was like Magic Show, Magic Wand, Magic Potion, beautiful plant, um, a gallon size plant really great shape, planted it, it gave me a couple of blooms and then that was it, out the door. 
Um, the plant rotted. It was supposed to be a perennial, and um, it's not coming back. I mean, it died in July. <laughs> so um, I was kind of disappointed with that because I was hoping for Veronica as a cut flower, but perhaps it's not conducive to my area. I am willing to try it again because I love the look and it's such an unusual look to a flower. So I am willing to try it again in a different area of my garden. I'm not, definitely not gonna put it in the same area because obviously it didn't work there. So it would be dumb for me to try to keep placing it in the same place hoping for a different outcome. So I am gonna be trying it in a different situation. This time I think I'm gonna try it in a pot, in a container, um, and see how it does this season. Another plant that I enjoy, but I'm kind of leery of it, is a uh, butterfly bush. And the deal with butterfly bushes is that they just go and go and go and go, all right? They just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I have what's called a, I think they call it like a pug butterfly bush, like it's a small um, variety of um, butterfly bush. But that sucker, if I didn't cut it back multiple times throughout the growing season, it would have been six, eight feet tall. Um, now I know other butterfly bushes can get way further than that. And so I do have it in an area where I don't love it. There's a really good chance I'm gonna dig it up and move it somewhere else so that it can have a larger growth habit if it chooses. Um, but it's still not necessarily my favorite because I have to cut it back. Also, I have found that it really, um, gets taken over by mealybugs at some point, at least one point during each season. Um, mealybugs usually hit it pretty hard. I can usually cut it all the way down to the base and it springs back and it does great, but I don't like having to deal with the mealybugs. I hate mealybugs. They are the bane of my existence um, in my garden. They are the pest that drives me insane. Um, in my garden and this year was not nearly as bad as two years ago. Two years ago was bad y'all like it took they took out 30 feet of garden like just ate everything. It was awful. Um, destroyed everything. This last year I was way more aware of it and so every time there was mealybugs I didn't treat them um, with any kind of um, you know uh, insecticide or anything like that. However anytime I saw them I cut off that portion of branch bagged it and threw it away. Um, I did that and that really did help maintain them pretty well. But butterfly bush, I feel like if you have the space for butterfly bush, it can be amazing. And it also does really great for cut flower blooms. However, if you have a small bit space like me and you don't put it in the right place, ugh, it kind of becomes this whole like really lopsided look within your garden and, and things like that. So there's a good chance I'm gonna dig mine up this year and maneuver it somewhere else so that hopefully I can allow it to have more space to grow and hopefully it will be more enjoyable for me. But it is on that caution list right now. Okay, and then the last plant that is on my caution list is um, Black Eyed Susan. And I know, I know. I <laughs> I know, it's a wonderful plant, right? Yeah, it's beautiful blooms, it's drought tolerant, they're great for cut flowers. I don't like mine, I, just, I don't like it. it. Takes up a lot of space in my garden. I've had it for three seasons. It doesn't put off very many blooms. The blooms I do get are short and stubby. Maybe it's the variety I'm growing, I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe it's in the wrong place, although I have it in full sun. I just, I can't get behind it and I can't get behind how much space it's taking up in my garden without having a great amount of production for me. Come on, come on. You like black eyes, Susans? You think we should keep them? You think we should keep them? Um, Rookie thinks we should keep them. <laughs> I just can't get behind it. I just, it, they're not working out in my garden at this point in time. It, that's just literally where are we at, um, where we're at. Maybe I need to move them. I mean, maybe I need to challenge myself to find a different space for it that, where they might be more productive. Uh, they get full sun, like a lot of sun all day. Um, and they get plenty of water. I wouldn't say they're overwatered. I don't know. Maybe I'll challenge myself to move these in the spring and see if a different area would be good for them um, as well. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Now, there are actually a lot more plants that I wouldn't necessarily grow in my garden. I'm not gonna go over all of them because the truth of the matter is, is 
some of the plants that I wouldn't grow again, I've only grown them for one season. And I don't feel like I have enough information or experience to tell you that I'm not growing those again. Because I think you have to grow things for multiple seasons, see how you like it, try some different options, and then if you still don't feel good about it, well, okay, that makes sense. Go get it out of there, you know. And so the five ones that I started at the beginning, I told you about, I've grown them multiple seasons, and it just doesn't work out for whatever reason. And then my caution ones, I've grown them one or two seasons at this point, and but they're they've made me unhappy. <laughs> so they're on the caution list and they could get cut at some point it just depends but I encourage you if there's a plant that you're struggling with give it a couple of seasons see how it does but if you don't like it rip it out don't keep something in your garden just because you think you have to call a friend get on a Facebook group a YouTube channel and be like hey anybody in this area want this plant it's yours for free Pass it along to somebody else, but don't let your garden be overcome with anything that is gonna, you know, take away your joy or your peace within your garden because, I don't know about y'all, but that is the number one reason I garden. I garden because I walk out there and I feel joy and I feel peace. I don't wanna walk out there and constantly be worried about one particular plant or bloom or worrying about this pest. Like, if I have to look at that stuff maybe once a week, okay. I can do that, but not every day. I need to walk out and I need to smile. I need to walk out and be able to take a breath of fresh air. I need to be able to walk out and see seeds sprouting and see the joy of new life coming in to my little garden world. And those are super important. So any plant that's gonna bring you down out of that you know, awesome, joyful, peaceful space, get it out. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed today's conversation. I am dying to hear what you will not plant in your garden again. I This is, I feel like, something like we don't really talk about. We only talk about the success things. I would love to hear about the failures. I would love to hear about the plants that literally drive you insane and you don't like them. Like, let's talk about it. Let's see what you got. All right, and as always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all. Do you come say bye? Come on. Say bye. He says bye bye. Bye bye. Ricky says bye bye. Just say.